will be shared. Your name as used in registration Zoom will be shown and will be seen by anyone who sees the video following the session. Important, whatever shows in your webcam, phone, or tablet camera may be shown to all virtual participants. Please make sure that you join in the session knowing what is visible behind you. Please let others in your household know that you are about to join the virtual session. Make sure not to give out any personal information on the virtual session, such as your location and your phone number during the Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a great time. Please join me in the promise and law. On my honor, I will try. I will try. This is my go. To help people at all times to live by the grace of God. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly, friendly and helpful, caring, caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, respect myself and others, and my authorities, wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sweet Now we are going to share our most memorable mo memory. One of my most memorable moments of being a cadet is not from too long ago when we had done the Eco Tracker badge. It was super fun and we had learned how to Wait. make mountain fires and had how to do a control oven like fire that was later used to make popcorn and was super efficient. The best part was we got to make s'mores and made popcorn over the fire. We got to talk and it was super fun. My most memorable cadet moment was when I got to face paint little girls at a Wonders of Wizarding Harry Potter event. I loved face painting with the girls because I got to interact and talk with them while painting whatever they desire on their face. Afterwards, I was able to play with them and have a great time. This experience reminded me about the benefits of being a cadet. We are the big sisters and role models to these little girls. One of my most memorable cadet moments is when we all went to the snow in Truckee on Martin Luther King weekend. This was the second time we took this trip, but this time we were completing our outdoor adventure badge and we went skiing and even took a ski lesson. I really liked it because we got to have the weekend to bond as a troop and also learn something new together. It was really fun to go skiing because it was a new experience and it was really cool to try something that I had never done before, especially with all my friends. By the end, some of us were even going up some of the more advanced slopes. We even got to stay in a cabin up in the mountains, and we had a lot of fun playing in the snow and making new memories together as a troop. My most memorable cadet moment was troop camping with my Girl Scout sister. It was my most memorable cadet moment because I just got to spend time with my Girl Scout sisters, have fun, and had the opportunity to be with each other and just enjoy goofing off and having fun. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Ava. In my favorite cadet moment was when we went to Van Dam State Park and went camping. Um, this state park is um, a park in Mendocino County. And this short trip was a reward for a silver award project, which I'll talk about later, which is another amazing experience you will get to have when you become a cadet. On our trip, we painted our nails, did face masks, and went on multiple hikes. Every night, we stayed up so late talking and laughing. One of my favorite parts of this trip is, one of my, is when one of my best friends, Alyssa, came back all the way from Utah to go on this trip with us. And it was such a treat to share this amazing moment with my entire troop. This is a memory I will remember forever. Okay, so we don't have any questions yet. So as we go along, ladies, if you would like to um, ask your questions in the Zoom chat, um, we'll be breaking in between different sessions to ask questions. So we don't have any, um, so you don't need a pencil or if you don't want to, um, we're gonna get to favorite badges in a second. So actually we don't have that. So we'll add that to the list. So we're going to keep going Michelle, with a favorite outdoor experience. So my favorite outdoor experience was Camp Knocktide because you got to learn new experiences. Last time I went, we went hiking in the dark, which was beautiful. We didn't go too far from camp and we went right after sunset. 
I also got to make a lot of new friends with the same interest as me. There are plenty of things to do while camping which excite me. My favorite outdoor experience was when we did our reward for our biggest project to date. We got to go camping for our Civil War celebration. We got to go on some very adventurous hikes, do some outdoor cooking, sit fireside with some of our closest friends, and eat s'mores. This celebration was the perfect way to end a very difficult yet rewarding Girl Scout activity. We were able to look back on the big and small things we had accomplished in the past few months. The Silver Award itself was very difficult, but this helped make it very worthwhile. Camping was a great way to experience the outdoors and get a feel for nature while still experiencing the feeling of a celebration. My favorite outdoor experience was troop camping. We hiked to a lake and learned many different methods in filtering water. It was just very fun getting to walk up this big hill to see a beautiful lake and spend time with my Girl Scout sisters. That's my favorite outdoor experience. Like Alyssa, my favorite cadet outdoor experience was when we went troop camping at a KOA in Willits, California. I liked this trip because there was a lot to do, like mini golfing and roasting marshmallows. We also learned how to purify water there, which is a good skill to have for the future. One of my favorite things we did there was swimming because it was a lot of fun and it was very relaxing and fun to be with all my friends. They even had an outdoor water park. Also, it was really funny when we were all trying to set up our tent at the beginning of our trip. It was also fun sitting around the fire and eating our breakfast, lunch, and dinner because we got to talk a lot. My favorite outdoor experience as a cadet was when we took a train in Truckee and stayed in a cabin. While we were in Truckee, we got to go play outside in the snow and make snowmans and we went tubing. We also got to ice skate outside and drink hot chocolate. It was my favorite outdoor experience because it brought us Girl Scout sisters closer and we all had a great time hanging out and enjoying the snow all together. My favorite outdoor experience was when we earned our good sportsmanship badge during a council bike ride next to San Francisco Bay. They taught us bike safety and how to maintain your bike, including tire pressure, checking the chains, and how to repair a flat tire. We got bikes to use for the day and went on trail rides. We stopped for lunch at a place that overlooked the bay. I learned that I enjoy trail riding and would like to do it more often. All right, so we have a couple of questions here. And one of the questions um, is, are all of the cadets that are speaking today in the same troop? And the answer is yes. So before we go on to the other questions, um, all the girls who are guests here today, please stop using the Zoom chat unless you have a question for the cadets. Um, so um, it's distracting and there's a lot of girls, uh, your Girl Scout sisters are asking you to stop. So please adhere to their request and stop. So another um, question is, um, oh, cause we don't have this uh, question on the list here, is what's your favorite um, uh, cadet badge. So, Sophia, would you start and explain what your favorite Go Girl Scout cadet badge was? So, I absolutely loved the night owl badge because we got to stay up late with our friends and we went bowling in like this bowling alley where they did like a neon lights thing and we got to wear like glow in the dark tape and we got lights sh shined everywhere and it was really fun. Okay, so Trisha, what was your favorite Girl Scout badge? I really like doing arts and crafts because I like to do art and everyone, I guess see everyone else's art how, and how they do it, which is fun. Great. And Alyssa, do you, um, do you have a favorite badge? Yes, my favorite badge was the pool party badge because we all just got to enjoy swimming and hanging out. Okay, Alyssa, um, Ella? My favorite badge, I think, was the outdoor adventure badge because it was fun to, like, go somewhere new and, like, do something that we don't normally do. Okay, all right. So we have another question here is um, what's... Um, what made you want to stay in Girl Scouts? What are the driving forces that make you want to stay in Girl Scouts? So I'm going to 
throw that question to Naya. Uh, something that made me want to stay in Girl Scouts was all the big like travel experiences we'll get to have later in the future and even like really soon. And I also like um, all of the different like it's a community and I've made a lot of friends with this and I just enjoy doing it. Perfect. What about you, Ronnie? Um, what made me stay in Girl Scouts is probably the sisterhood, like having all the same girls that you've been friends with for years and you'll stay friends with. And then I also enjoy traveling. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go on to the next set of questions. Um, so take it away, ladies. Okay, so an outdoor skill I like to learn was making fires and cooking outdoors. Even though it's a simpler task, I enjoyed being able to make my own food when camping. It's not only a good thing to know how to do, but it's also nice to be able to sit by the fire with friends, talk, roast marshmallows, and my favorite thing to do is make grilled cheese on a stick. Perfect, perfect. My favorite outdoor skill that I learned was skiing. My friends and I were able to get coaches but I already went skiing before, so I went to a more advanced teacher, which surprisingly there was no one else who went to the group, so I basically got a private lesson. I did go skiing at the end of the rest of my trip though. While we were trip camping and having an amazing time, we got the chance to learn many ways to purify water and stay safe in nature. This outdoor skill made it so we could feel confident going on nature walks and hikes without feeling like if we were trapped, and we couldn't reach any purified water, we had the peace of mind that we could purify it ourselves. This skill was very fun to learn. It gave us the opportunity to take part in a hands-on learning experience instead of watching an adult do it for us. That is one of the amazing things about being a cadet and growing older in Girl Scouts. Great, so now we're gonna take another question. And there's a question here that I don't know the answer to, so I'm just going to be transparent and let you know that I don't know why the cadet vest is tan. When you advance from junior to a green vest to a tan vest, that's uh, the cadet level, but you're also a tan vest when you're a senior and an ambassador. So all three levels, cadet, senior, and ambassador are the tan vest. So you can opt to have one vest the entire three sessions or levels, or you can have one vest for each level. Um, all right, so, and then um, somebody wanted to know what the primitive camper badge is and what you did to earn it. Ava, can you talk about that? We earned that at Fall Encampment, remember? Yes. Um, uh, when was Fall Encampment? I know what you're talking about, but I'm trying to like track remember back your own um your own tents oh yeah i know what you're talking about yes 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 okay so to earn your primitive primitive camping badge you have to live primitively kind of yeah primitively so basically we had to build our own shelter make, try and make our own fire um make our own food pure did i say purify water whatever we had to purify water and basically kind of learn how to live on our own in the wilderness because living in like the suburbs or cities are pretty self-explanatory if you're by yourself but the wilderness is kind of like a different story story so yeah we did do that and then we actually had to we were given challenges for example we were split up into two teams and we were asked um to each make a structure to sleep under and the winner would like get extra food and my team didn't win that's okay, because we learned how to make food and different things like that. So I learned a lot. All right. So another question that's came out is, what is hard about being a cadet? So Trisha, can you answer that one? What's hard about being a cadet? Well, you get more oblig. You got to do more things. Like, you got to do the silver award, which is a bigger step than doing the bronze board and it's not too difficult from stepping from one from younger girl scout and then to this one but 
there's not too many hardships. Yeah, there, it's, there's more prerequisites, but it's not harder. Would you agree with that, Trisha? Yeah. So Landon, one of the questions that they're asking is, what are um, some of your favorite games that you've learned as a Girl Scout? Um, can you share with everybody maybe a game that you like to play as a Girl Scout? Um, a game that I like to play as a Girl Scout is probably Down by the Banks. Okay. All right. Any other ones? No. That's your favorite? Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, so one of the, so the last question we're going to keep going is, uh, is there super adult supervision when you did the uh, primitive camper badge? And of course at Girl Scouts, you know, you have to have two registered um, adult Girl Scouts um, when you're, um, when you have younger Girl Scouts. So there's always supervision, but sometimes the supervision is a little bit more remote. And another question that popped up was, um, what's your favorite place to swim or your most unique place to swim as a Girl Scout? Um, let's go, let's see. Um, Sophia, you want to answer that question about swimming? Sure. So we all love swimming when we're camping. We get to go to pools at the campgrounds that are, they're like, they're really fun because you're with all your friends and it, or we can go to someone's house and it's just as fun. So pretty much swimming is just fun for us. Okay, perfect, perfect. So let's go on. So there's been a lot of questions about the silver award. And so we're gonna, um, so Ava is, Avocado is her camp name. It's gonna actually take you through her silver, her silver award, she has other people that she did it with, but her silver award, PowerPoint presentation to walk you through all the steps that was required to earn the silver award. So go ahead, Ava. Um, yeah, okay. Hold on one second. Just one tiny second. Okay, can everyone see your screen? That should look like a silver award project. Does that work? Perfect. Uh, Mom, can you get the dog? Thank you. And um, okay, so today, right now, I'm going to talk to you about the Girl Scout Silver Award Project, um, how I did it with a couple girls in my troop, and all the process and all that. So obvious, I don't know if you guys know this, most of you, I don't know, you guys should, but the bee population has been um, like rapidly declining due to um, modern poppy pollution, oh my gosh pollution and other things like that. And so we decided, Naya, Alyssa, Addison, and I decided to tackle this issue um, for our silver award. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to, what the heck, oh, oh wait, yep, there we go. Okay, so before we could even start, we had to take a webinar, which is, it's kind of like this, and you just kind of learn all about the silver award, how to do it, what the requirements are, and then, obviously, we had to bridge from a junior to a cadet, and that's a picture of all of us when we were really little bridging, and we all wore tutus. We bridged across the Golden Gate Bridge, which is in, um, what's it called? It's in San Francisco. So, yeah, that was really fun. Oh, oops. Okay. Then, right before you start your journey, you have to have a, um, you have to finish a journey before you start your silver award. Yeah. So we decided to do the breathe journey. The breathe journey is where you learn about pollution, smoking, vaping, the medical repercussions of those and all of that. And so we went down to the Bay Area Management District and we met a lot of specialists in air quality and we learned all about that. And then we completed that. It was really fun. That we, we, while we were there, we did so many fun things. Like we baked eclairs. If you guys don't know what eclairs are, they're basically little puff pastry things that um, 
I don't know, you, the air in them is what makes them, like, grow, I think. I, I really don't know. But we made them. Those were great. And then we smelled different candles to understand how smell works. You know that? And then for our take action project, because you always need a take action project, we went to the town of Windsor, which is the town that I live in, and my Girl Scout troop is based in, and we worked with our town council to put up signs that prohibit smoking and vaping. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you're drawing on this, like, I know you, like, don't worry, like, don't do that. It's kind of weird. Okay, thanks. Um, then well, we had to, guys, like, seriously, stop. Okay, and then we had to start um, talking about what we were going to actually do. So we went on a three-day kind of a journey where, uh, where we researched, went on field trips, and mapped out different projects. We also wrote and delivered donation request letters to help, so people can help us with the um, budget, you know, because projects like this can be extremely expensive. And this is a picture. I don't know if you can see it because people keep writing, but this is a picture of the land before we um, we started our project. Oh, oops. Then, before we started, we had to actually map out the land to make sure we didn't go above or like a, out of our boundaries. And then we used Cornelson Tractor and Land Management. They donated all of their time and services to help us clean up the land. And there were, there were two really, really massive logs that we decided to incorporate back into our project because they were already there and they were really big and very, uh, you could tell they were there for a while. So, you know, we could use those. And then this is our first day of work. Um, I mean, this is before the first day of work. That's what it looks like in the back. Do you guys see those really big logs? Yeah, those are huge. And yeah, and then to the next slide, this was our first work day. We shoveled so much mulch and irrigation needed for the project. So we shoveled so much. Oh my gosh, you guys. It was a lot of work, but you know, it's worth it in the end. Um, wait, did I push the button? Yes, I did. Sorry. Okay. So the next day, we had to shovel all of the dirt and topsoil. And yeah, we just had to keep shoveling all day. It was worth it though. And after three consecutive weekends, so it's like six work days um, of working on this project, we put in the bender board, rocks, and, install and installed the arch. You guys like actually, like cadets all about like Ava, growing up I'm and helping other people. For one second. Ava, I'm gonna stop you. Is it Maybe. me? I'm gonna stop you. Whoever is drawing on the screen, knock it off. That is it. Okay. So, okay. Can you unshare your screen, Ava, and then start again so that you can um, be fresh? Jen, yeah, I, think first. Can, I think you can disable draw, or I don't know no, who's- No, we can't. Okay, um, let's try this again, okay? Is everyone okay with that? Great. Yeah. Um, is this, this is the slide that I was on, right? Yeah. Okay, so in the slide, in, um, on, after our, like, sixth day of working full day, we, the bender board is basically, like, a piece of, uh, a piece of, uh, wood that makes sure that all the, our, um, the rocks and the, dirt don't get out, and then we put an arch. You guys have seen those in like Disney movies, the arch where the vines grow through. It's really pretty. We just put it there so it can be beautiful. And we put rocks for a pathway so that people could walk into the garden, even though like people weren't supposed to walk in the garden, but it was just kind of all for a look, you know? Um, uh, my computer's not, hold on. There we, oh, I cannot see my board. <laughs> So, um, finally, we were able to plant the plants, and we also finished all the irrigation in the water feature. The water feature was basically just a really small fountain so that the, um, the bees could drink. Um, I'm sorry that you guys can't see the pictures. Um, 
I promise you that they're really great. We was so much fun. But now with everything, all of the plants and mulch in, we had to distribute more mulch over the top to make sure that it was completely sealed and the roots would grow properly. And we had to clean up the site because we had a bunch of um, like tools there. Um, let me see. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I can't really see my board, Mom. I'm gonna stop and then unshare your screen, please. I'm sorry. Nope, that's your fine. It's fine. So, um, ladies, because <clears throat> somebody's being not very Girl Scout like and being very disrespectful, we are going to um, move on, and you don't get to see the rest of the presentation on how what? these girls worked so hard on their Silver Award project, which took them over seven, 70 hours. And um, they had a really great celebration. And unfortunately, um, somebody is being extraordinarily rude. And so it's very sad. So you want to show the before and after pictures, Ava? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, this is, did you guys, I don't know if you guys fine. can see it before. Okay. So that's what it looked like at the end. Obviously, none of the plants were fully grown out. But after, but you could have seen before that it was just, but before we started, it was just random um, weeds and dirt. And now it was a beautiful garden that would help so many bees flourish and thrive and create more of themselves. But of course, there is always still more work to do. We had to plan a ceremony to like unveil it to the community so everyone could see it. And we made educational little like party favors to share. So what we did is we put, we got um, like, uh, like soil and we put seeds in them and then we rolled the balls so that they're seedlings. So you can just plant them in the ground and they grow. It'd be perfect, you know, to help the bee population. It was so much fun. And then we finally got to go have the ceremony and it was so much fun because we got to, everyone, all the community got to um, be there and uh, we had an ice cream parlor, which was so good. And then the next day, we handed out our little seed bombs, I guess you call them, at the farmer's market on um, in our town. And afterwards, it was finally complete, you guys. I was so happy, and we worked really hard on it. And we worked way over the 50-hour requirement. And thank you so much for learning about my project. I'm sorry that you guys couldn't see some of the pictures. But I just want you guys to know that, you know, it's really exciting. I really recommend it. So good luck. Oh, and this is a, oh, shoot. So turn it off, um, put it back on, Ava. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought this was going to go better. Okay. So this is a picture of the, of our sign, basically talking about the issue of bees, the root cause of our project, about the project, and what we learned in the process. And this is, and on the bottom are all pictures of us. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Okay. And then this is a picture of everyone who generously shared their time and energy and resources to help us with this amazing project. So yeah, thank you so much for learning about it. That was a disaster. No, it was good. No, you did great. So um, I'm sorry that you had to uh, um, work through that, but you did a great job, Ava. So um, so do we have some questions about the Girl Scout Silver Project in particular? Okay. All right. So, um, who's Ariel Addison? Okay, so here, hold on here. All right, so we're going to go back to um, our questions, and um, so girls, let's just keep on moving forward. My favorite part of the Silver Award project was after we finished, we had a celebration of all the hard work we had put into this project. We got to invite all the people who had helped us, our family and friends, and all the people who generously donated their time and money 
into creating this wonderful bee and hummingbird garden habitat. And of course, we had ice cream. One of my favorite things that I liked about when we did our silver award was my troop creating a hummingbird and bee garden. We had to move the dirt and mulch and do the garden itself, but it was surprisingly enjoyable. My troop had two groups of girls doing the silver award. So half of us were the bee garden and the other half were the hummingbird habitat. I was the hummingbird. So it was super fun to like debate between us bee versus hummingbird. And I thought the garden, making the garden itself was super fun and probably one of my favorite things about the silver award. My favorite part of the silver award was irrigating. It was really fun learning how it works and because my troop would make jokes while doing the irrigation. It's also fun to find out what wasn't working and what was, and then fixing that problem. Right, yes. great. So um, we have some questions here. So um, one of the questions is, how did we get the donations? And so, um, Naya, do you wanna, you wanna talk about how we, um, wrote the letters and went to the, all the different vendors and asked them for their support? Uh, yeah, sure. So pretty much we sat down and wrote letters for asking for donations for the different supplies for our garden. And then we went to talk with the people that would be able to supply it. And we either got a yes or a no. And most of the time the people would say yes. And that's how we got most of our garden done. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and then, um, let's see here. All right, and somebody wanted to know what was the budget, and we actually, for the both projects, the Hummingbird Garden and the Bee Habitat, um, we did um, everything pretty much with donations. Uh, we didn't do any Silver Award specific fundraising. Um, but um, it, we really relied on the, the, the community to help the girls. So, um, so maybe we can talk about a little bit about how we separated the two projects. Ronnie, can you talk about the fact that we had two distinct projects on the same piece of land and how it was separated? So we had Half of it was bee and half of it was hummingbird. So if you saw the photos that Ava was showing us, one half from where the fountain is was bee and the other half was hummingbird. So we had to get special permission before to do the projects together because there is um, a maximum of four girls per project. But once we got it, um, once it was allowed, we were able to build our garden and pretty much do overall the same things except for one of us we're studying hummingbirds and plants more for hummingbirds and the other half for bees. And then we mostly worked on our own half garden. Okay. And another question that came in was, um, how did we get the land? Um, Ava, do you want to address that? Yeah. Okay. So we, um, we kind of just looked all, so obviously my, my troop is based in a small town called Windsor. And um, we noticed that we have like a historical museum of our town in our town. So in, next to that, there is a plot of land. And we noticed that there is nothing, there was nothing on that land, like zilch. So we're like, oh, well, we have this issue. We have a silver ward and we have this plot of land. So we asked for it and we got it. It was great. Yeah, so we were really lucky in order um, to get a half an acre plot of land in our city um, that was given to us and we could uh, develop it as the girls wanted. All right, so um, let's move forward. Um, let's talk about travel goals, Bella. Okay, so one of the biggest things that separate being a junior from being a cadet is there's a lot more opportunities for leadership and responsibility. So one of the most fun things is to travel when you become a cadet because you become a lot more like self, 
self-dependent and like self-sufficient which is one of the like most fun things so our main trip travel goal right now is to go to savannah georgia this trip was supposed to happen this summer but because of the current situation of the world and the coronavirus it's postponed till next summer this will allow us to travel out of state and even go on a plane together our next big travel goal as a troop is to travel internationally and most likely somewhere in europe our troop earns money by not only cooking and fall product sales, but by doing money earning events for younger girls. We host fun events for the girls as well as being educational, and usually they complete a journey by the end of the event. These events are fun for us as well as the girls, and we are able to make a large amount of money in a short amount of time. This is a much more beneficial way to earn money than cookie sales for our troop because it allows us to practice leadership skills with younger girls as well as make a good profit for our troop. These events vary, for example, some of the events are only a few hours and some of them are overnight. Over the years, we come up with lots of different money earning events that keep our girls entertained and engaged. I was the highest cookie seller on the troop this year. I sold over a thousand boxes of cookies. I like selling cookies because it allows me to sell independently and use the Girl Scout selling skills I have learned throughout the years. This year, I also used digital cookie. That was fun because you could track your sales online. I like Boo Sales because it helps you get used to public speaking and you get to spend time with your sister scouts. Booths also help you to share information about Girl Scouts and our troop activities with the community. My favorite money earning event we hosted was the Wonders of Wizarding event similar to Harry Potter. We had 75 people overnight. We included six stations, all Harry Potter themed, with fun wizard activities. The girls also got to see some fun creatures in person, such as snakes and birds. Us cadets played with the girls and taught them. I'd like to hear from it. Then at night, we all watched the show with snacks with s'mores and pop. Hey, um, <laughs> I'm going to interrupt here. Can we make sure that everybody is on mute? Oh, yeah, I think I'm on the Can we do that, please? All right. So, um, Ava, you're next. Your money favorite money earning event. Yeah. Okay. So my favorite money wait. Yeah. My favorite money earning event was the Willy Wonka event. We hosted younger Girl Scouts. Um, we watched Willy Wonka oh, and pizza so stole gone. candy and had a chocolate fountain. And of course we had like people paid as they came gone. in so that we could make money off of this. I absolutely loved this event because it taught me a lot Sorry. about hospitality, how to take care of people. And Hold we on. all had different stations. Here's my hairbrush. That like. Okay. The lettuce. Um, okay. My. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the lettuce. Um, basically teach people how to do certain crafts, hand out pizza, and sell different candies. I had so much funny with, so much fun with this event and making money, eating the candy, and of course, watching Willy Wonka with my troop. One of my favorite money earning events was the Moana movie night. We put on an event that was Hawaiian themed. At this event, we had a hula dancer come in and teach younger Girl Scouts how to dance the hula a station to blow a conch shell, and other craft stations. We also had Hawaiian pizza, sweet treats with Moana-themed names, and Hawaiian punch, punch to drink. We had as much fun planning the, this event as the girls that came to it did. Sorry, um, okay, so now we're gonna talk about what our favorite journey is. Naya. Oh no, what? you're right. Sorry, Eva, that was you. Yeah, okay. So um my we're gonna talk about our favorite journeys. Okay. So my favorite journey was the breathe journey. Through this journey, we learned about the medical repercussions of smoking and vaping. This was so fun to learn about, and we got to do some really fun activities. Like we smelled candles to understand how smells work. 
and like uh, in like your lungs, that kind of thing. We made eclairs, um, which I talked about earlier. I have to do something with air. I totally forgot. But that was great, and they were delicious. Um, and we visited. I cannot speak. Sorry. A little. And we visited an air quality specialist um, that taught us a lot about the air in vaping and smoking. We later, for our Take Action project, put signs in our town that, t that let people know that smoking and vaping were prohibited. This was a super fun journey that definitely taught me a lot about air quality and was really fun and really helped me raise awareness for this common issue of smoking and vaping. And I really, really recommend this for everyone. My favorite cadet journey that we did was by far the Breathe journey. This journey was very fun and exciting because we had an opportunity to go to an air observatory lab type of thing. This was a fantastic learning opportunity and while we were learning, we got to have an amazing time. Throughout this journey, we got to travel to many places, including the beach. While we were there, we got to stay in a beach house and we made eclairs. We stayed in a beach house because it's close to the beach and when you're closer to the beach, the cleaner the air. And we thought it'd be kind of cool because that we're doing a journey on breathing and air. And we also made eclairs. And the breathe journey had many fun aspects and is perfect for juniors transitioning to be cadets. My favorite journey was also the breathe journey. It was fun to do the journey all together for a weekend. One of the activities was exploring your sense of smell. I thought this was the best activity we did. We were blindfolded to see if we could identify the scents. Some of the scents were bubblegum coffee grounds and garlic powder. I thought that you would be able to identify the smells easily, but it was harder than you think. All right, Anaya. Naya, are you there? Did we lose Naya? Yeah, I don't think she's in. But oh, Those okay. All right, so let's, uh, let's do some questions then. Um, one of the questions is, um, Raquel, what's the best thing that you've done with your Girl Scout sisters since the stay-at-home order? Um, on Zoom, we had a little Zoom like sleepover thing and we did like face mask, yoga, um, and we got like a box with like popcorn and other stuff and we made a mask out of a bandana and then we colored on pillowcases and we had like a little like sleepover thingy on Zoom. So that was fun. Awesome. And Ella, um, uh, let's see, what's the last thing that you did as a Girl Scout before the stay at home order? Oh, um, I like can't even remember. Um, why don't you think about that? And somebody said, um, who paid for the signs? Alyssa, do you want to talk about that? Who paid for the signs for the breathe journey? Do you remember? A little refresher would be greatly appreciated. How about the town of Windsor? Oh yeah, it was our town that we, um, our bee habitat and garden was located in. The town actually decided to help us out and buy the signs for us. And we got them printed and hung up. All right, and another question is for Trisha. Um, when were you planning to go to Savannah, Georgia? And now when are you planning on going? So we were planning on going to Savannah, Georgia this summer in the, around June, right? Yes, but it, since Corona got that canceled, we're moving that to next summer. Perfect. Fun. Perfect. And there's some questions about vests. Um, um, oh. Ava, can you stand up and show them the front of your vest and some of the um, yeah. badges you've earned? Hold on, you guys aren't gonna be able to see me if I don't change this, so hold on. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, so this is the back of my vest. Okay. Cool. And show the, show the badges. These are, the, oh no. On the front. Okay, so this is my, these are my patches, all of them. There's some on the inside, but these are my patches and then my pins and then my obvious stuff that you have to have. Okay, and then, show, her, show them your silver award pin. Where is that? That's your silver torch. Oh, oh, this is one. Wait, no, this one, yeah. This is my silver award pin. This is my bronze award pin. You get one for each award. And these are my journeys, right? right. Yep. Yep, and these are some more badges, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yep, yeah. All right. So, um, great. And then, um, Landon, you want to show them your, ba your vest? Yeah. Ugh. Making my background normal. Those, those, yep. And you'll notice that the girls all have some um, theater badges on. So we, as a troop, always go to the theater at least once a year to San Francisco. So Ronnie, let's do, let's have you answer this question. How old were you when you started Girl Scouts and um, what level were you at that point? So how long have you been a Girl Scout? Um, I started Girl Scouts when I was a brownie and that would make me, I can't remember <laughs> the age exactly, but I started as second a- Second grade, first or second grade, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. And what about you, Raquel? How old were you when you started Girl Scouts? I know I was a Daisy for a year, so I think I was like seven or six. Yeah, little. Yeah, I was little. Little tiny girl. Yeah, so then we have another question here. What, um, what's your favorite camp? And you've been to a lot, because we went to Camp Kanaktai up when we were in Boonville, and then there was other Camp Kanaktais, and we've been to Camp Royanna, and then we've done troop camping. Um, who wants to answer that question? Favorite camp experience? Okay, Landon. Um, my favorite camp that I've ever been to is probably um, the K-Way with the big trampoline thing. Oh yeah, that was fun, oh. that was in Santa Cruz. That was in Santa Cruz. Okay, so we have a question here. I saw something about NASA. Ava, you want to talk about NASA um, Girl Scout Space Camp? Oh, for sure I do. Oh my gosh. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm like obsessed now. Oh my gosh, Mary. With NASA. Okay, you can see why all the girls in the green are like smiling their faces off. Okay, so NASA Space Camp. The best thing you will ever do in your entire life, no matter what. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what the application process is. Because you can't actually like go into space camp camp and just like walk in you actually have to apply um you have to answer a lot of essay questions about yourself about your academics so like your grade how well you are and like science and math you don't have to be great at them I mean but yeah and then and then you have to be actually be accepted into the space camp and then oh my gosh and then you actually have to go so people think that so I don't know I told someone a while ago, I was going to go to space camp. I'm like, oh, that's going to be fun. You know, you don't have to travel far, that kind of thing. I was like, no. Okay. I actually had to go all the way to um, Huntsville, Alabama for NASA space camp. Yeah. And um, I learned a lot there, a lot about spaceships, um, space, women in space, men in space, like everything surrounding around space in the galaxy, which was amazing. Also, if you ever go, here's a big heads up. You will be placed in a group with girls, but you are, there's no, it's not a camp full of girls. There's a week dedicated to girls going, but there are guys and other people still there. So I didn't know that when I first went, so that was kind of startling. Yeah, I'm sorry. I get really hyped up on this question. 
Yeah, well, yeah it was Sophia, very let's let's have Sophia address base camp because that was really a big trek. We had to go from San Francisco airport all the way to Nashville and then drive down to Huntsville, Alabama to drop you guys off. Sophia, what was your favorite memory from space camp? So everything about space camp was just absolutely amazing. It was the best experience I'm probably ever going to have. But we got to stay in dorms with our friends. And we got to hang out, but we were still learning about space, but they made it really, really fun. And so we were able to enjoy ourselves while still using our brains over summer because everyone kind of loses something over summer. So it was a good refresher and it was really, it was just amazing. It was an amazing experience. Hey, Ella, do you have a favorite camp experience that you want to share? Like camping, council camping, service unit camping, what's your, do you have a one three? I think my favorite camp experience, well, overall, I really like our day camp that we do in our town, but I think last year, I really liked because that was, like, one of the places that I think I learned the most about, like, leadership skills and, like, leading younger girls, and also I had the people who I was with, like, the other people I was leading the little girls with, were like really nice and we all like bonded a lot. So I really like that. Yeah. And then, so there's another question here that says, um, everything that you do sounds really expensive. How do you pay for it all? Do some of your parents help you pay? And, um, and we do a lot of money earning events in our troop, don't we? So, um, so we, we raise a lot of money so right now we have enough money to go to Savannah in the bank right now. And we are already traveling. We have a travel fund for 2022 and 2024 already ready to go. So they're already locked and loaded. But um, so we, um, we have a lot of events that generate money in our region. So let's, let's go ahead. If there's no more questions, let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and move to the next thing on our agenda, which is Trisha. You're going to be leading the girls. So, everyone, we're going to sing a song together. So, please unmute yourselves. And this is how it goes Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver, and the other is gold. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver, and the other is gold. So, this is loud. Okay, just go ahead. Ready, um, Courtney, can you put everyone on mute? Um, is Naya back on somewhere? Yeah, hi. Oh, uh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Yay. So, um, Naya, we missed one of your questions was, what was your favorite journey and why? Oh, okay. So, my favorite journey was the Amaze journey because we learned a lot about our feelings and how we affected each other's. And for the TA part of the project, we painted rocks with positive messages or words um, that people could enjoy in their community. And it was like a little garden in the park. Yeah, so we have a kindness rock garden in our town with 
really positive messages that people can go visit at any time and it's really beautiful. So we have one final thing tonight and that Naya is our virtual closing circle. Would you like to lead that for us? Yeah, so since we can't really do it like you normally could, you could just cross your arms and then on a count of three, we could all say woo or something, I don't know. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay. What? So, one, two, three. Hello. Woo! 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 Thank you. Woo! Thank you, one, thank, you, thank you for joining, and we will be sending out the video so you can watch it a little bit later. And um, we will also be sending out the um, link with the complete um, PowerPoint presentation so you can review it at another time without writing in scribbles. So thank you girls for joining us. We enjoyed having you and we will see you all later. Hello. Okay. Bye. Bye.